Was nun, oder? <lacht> Wow, welcome everybody! Waterbox Live! Hey, hey. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> Come on now, everybody. Listen, hope you had a fantastic holiday. Yes. Christmas was just yesterday. And yeah. We're back at it. Trying yeah. to Wednesday. get back Ooh. in the motions here, right? Yes. yes. So it's very exciting because, you know, I want to, I, we want to be very real here, uh, Rich, you know, of what we walked into to the aquarium, what it looks like after a long weekend. Right. Yeah. You, you know right. what I mean? So I don't want people to four, like... Four solid days of us days. not touching it. Yes. Yeah. No love. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like? And I think that's a very interesting topic. So we're going to show that with you guys. We're going to start the show. So please like us, share us, post us to all the groups. Yep. Let's start the show, guys. Let's go. Let's do it. Welcome back. That's right. <laughs> Listen, man, I am so pumped up today, man. I've been... You've been on the Aminos already? I'm on the Aminos already. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And the holiday is over. We're already looking into 2019. Oh, oh my Lord. goodness. Yes. 2019 is going to be Dude. awesome. Yeah. Unbelievable. Epic, Epic man. Yeah. Straight up bananas. Hit the reset button. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, awesome things planned for you guys. But we definitely share the stream. We're talking about maintenance. We usually do our maintenance on Fridays. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because of the extended break, today. we're going to do it today. Why not? Yeah. Right? We don't want to wait till Friday because then we're talking about like five days or six exactly. days with, yeah. with exactly. no maintenance. So Exactly. And uh, so, yeah, these guys are going to get to see the real tank after it has been touched for yeah. four days. Yeah. Now, we've been feeding it pretty heavy. You know, mm -hmm. you saw last week. I mean, we, we, we threw some food in there. We were fish and corals to be fat and happy, so yeah. we uh, don't hold back on the feeding. That's for yeah. sure around yeah. here. So. so we are going to also do like a, do a small water change. Mm -hmm. We'll show you the algae, how it build up. If you have any questions and answers, also, Rich is going to be monitoring all the, the questions, so please comment. Um, he'll yes. give you a shout out. Yes. And, any and questions you, you have, them put them below, uh, Facebook or YouTube. Yeah, also, I know a lot of you probably got a water box for Christmas. Yes. You know, they joined the families. So There's been a lot of new family lot. members lately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hitting that. So let us know that you, you now have a water box <laughs> or you got your gift cards and you're ready to buy that water box today. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, let's get started. Yeah, let's, we're going to head on over to the 230 gallon dream yeah. build and uh, start some maintenance. There. Yeah, killer. What do we have here? All right. Oh my goodness. The real world view of the tank after two <laughs> days of not being loved, like. Yeah. Oh my time. goodness. And they need to get wow. cleaned up a bit. So, the lights are on a schedule, guys, right? So we have the lights kicking on and off, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. We put all that food in there. Um, and now, if Keena can get a side shot here of what this look at the algae on this tank do you see that that is normal yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> don't you know don't don't think this is uh out of the ordinary but you'll notice like our snails love it right i mean they are yeah you can see them they're making trails through yeah. it as they eat it up <laughs> um but a lot of the rest of it needs to be cleaned up by us yeah so the skimmer uh, it's been working like crazy, and we'll, we'll show you that so you can take a look. Look at this thing. It is full and over the weekend. It's gonna be gross. It's wow! Be, yeah. Look mm. at that, guys. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. That's delicious. Mm. That's some espresso Dean was right there, man. Seafood <laughs> last week. This week he's gonna be chugging mm. the skimmer juice. Skimmer. <laughs> Skimmate challenge. So uh, you can see that this skimmer is 
I mean, just ripping stuff out of this water. I mean, you can see the socks are pretty dirty here as well. It's time, it's time to, to clean this bad boy up, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so again, guys, uh, as we're doing some maintenance here, we're going to be telling you about everything that we're, we're trying to accomplish as we do some regular maintenance on this tank. If you have questions, post them below, and uh, we'll address them. Yeah, so the one main thing, if, uh, Keen, if you come around the side, we usually, I like using magnets, keeps your hands dry out of the tank. You know, uh, there's a bunch of different uh, magnets on, on the market. Um, and just and make sure no sand gets caught up in the magnet. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to be just, you know, even though it's a glass tank, um, it, it does, it can scratch. So you want to be real careful with Much it. Much more resilient than acrylic, but you do have to be careful because you don't yeah. want to scratch. If your, you come on this side, can you see? shiny new water box. You'll, if you hit the side shot, you'll see what happens. You'll see the. Another thing to note is if you leave your magnet in your tank, make sure before you use you it see that? that nothing's gotten in it. The like, difference? Sometimes oh, yeah. like buildup will get in on that pad like that. or like even like snail eggs and stuff sometimes right. go there. Because then you're going to go and go clean your glass and there will actually be something yeah. there that can scratch it. So yeah. you want to make sure to make sure if you leave it in the tank, don't let any buildup on it on the inside either. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see here. Good point, good point. Can you see the half and half there? Mm-hmm. Look at that, guys. So you can see it didn't take much effort at all to clean the glass. Um, and it's usually good, to, as you said, just, you know, hey, you come home from work, grab the magnet, do a quick once over on the glass. The magnet, if you're using it regularly, it keeps you from having to go in there and really like start scrubbing because yeah. you're not letting algae build up and coralline and stuff build up enough where you have to go in there with a scraper often. So if you're going every day or two and just doing a touch up with the magnet, it saves you from having to Absolutely. do that harder work. And that's what we usually do here, but you can see after four days of us not going and getting it cleaned up, uh, the glass definitely needs some, a little bit of extra attention now. Yeah, so what I do is I go real close, as close as I can to the sand without it kind of stirring up, and then I'll come back with the, uh, the actual manual scraper and hit the, along that sand, that sand line that's right there. So Jess, we got a question from Anthony. He says, when you do a water change on the 100.3, and shut off the system, does the water rise in the tank or just the sump? Is there s s anything I shouldn't shut off? Um, so on the 100? Doing a, hmm. Oh, really most tanks in general, if you're doing a water change, you need to turn off your skimmer, pump, and power heads. Um, if you're gonna have, I mean, it wouldn't be like in that, like in a water box that you get a system that didn't have like the heater down and submerged. Mm -hmm. If that was gonna be out of the water, you would wanna have to make sure that's turned off too. But, right. Um, you know, definitely just your main equipment needs to be shut down. Which so those of you just joining in, we're here on the 230 gallon dream build. It's been about four days since we've even cleaned the glass and we're gonna do some regular maintenance here. We're gonna talk about it. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, corals are looking fantastic. Yeah, uh, if you tuned in last week, corals. we fed the corals quite a bit. So um, it's time for a water change. It's time to clean the skimmer. It's time to clean the glass and all that good fun stuff. And something that a lot of people don't know is that haze on your glass is not a bad thing. Yes. Um, it yeah, is good point. It's actually um, feeding your corals. It's yeah. natural phytoplankton. So when we're cleaning this off and it's just naturally occurring in your aquarium, um, this is food for the corals. It's the natural growing um, algae right. phyto right. in your tank. It may so. be unslightly and it makes your starfire glass look a little hazy. <laughs> Um, but it's not a bad Can you thing. Get this side no. shot here. See where <laughs> the <laughs> pump is. Have up on the glass, and it's mm -hmm. actually Can showing see that? healthiness mm -hmm. Real good. System as far as um, that it's actually occurring. Now, if it clean your glass and the next day yeah. it's completely green again, there is probably a problem. But yeah, clean in the water box. Is normal. Yeah. But yeah, and if you're I mean, like me, Dean, I gotta keep yeah. every panel crystal clear. Yeah, Rich all likes the time. <laughs> Rich Hence even the likes glass that. overflow system. <laughs> he likes the back panel. <laughs> <laughs> Scraped clean. Just, you can do full yeah, full glass. Nancy asks, why are we not using a blade on the magnet? Well, Nancy, uh, you can. We could. Yeah. Uh, there's just not really a it's need not really, in this tank so much just yet. If there was a lot of coralline yes, growing yeah, on the glass exactly. or something like that, we would need it. Uh, but right now, it, it's just not really necessary. Um, yeah. Paul says, sorry if I pronounced your name pronounced your name wrong. Well, what rock are you using in that tank and how many pounds? This is the Marco Rocks. Um, we sell packages designed specifically for these tanks. So this, the rock in here is probably between what, 120 and 150 pounds of rock, roughly? Yeah, probably right around there. 
Yeah. yeah, so we're just going to keep hitting the algae on it. Oh, that's why you have a floating magnet. <laughs> so that you can like, yeah, because some magnets, man, they'll sink. And that's a problem. Yeah, there are magnets on the market yeah. that do sink. And that's <laughs> a little frustrating. frustrating. It ends up in the sand. Yeah. And you don't want to just let the magnet pop back out of the sand because exactly. then you'll end up with a exactly. bunch of grains in it. So you'll see that. No. So the tank's getting a little cloudy because we're stirring it all up, but it usually settles out pretty fast. I mean, uh, and you're actually kind of feeding the corals right now anyway. Yeah. So dude, look at these corals. I don't know if you can zoom in on the corals, Keenan, but now dude, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> dude, these guys are happy. Yeah, everything has done absolutely amazing in here, and um, I haven't had to move anything around. They've been happy with the flow and light, and just yeah. really nice, healthy, happy corals right now. So meanwhile, while we, while we do this algae, guys, we also have the water. Uh, we're making, uh, we're preparing the, the clean salt water, right, in a separate bin that is, um, we're just stirring it up, got the heater on it, making sure everything is. Yeah, and if, and if you guys go back to some of our previous videos, maybe clean. three or four weeks ago, we talked about that water, that yeah. system, right, with the vats and the freshwater vat and the saltwater vat. Yeah, so pretty much that was the front, the, the main front panel. Um, at least we can now see into the tank. Looks really good. Dude, those lights are sick, man. I love those lights, Rich. Yeah, so what you guys are looking at here, if you're just joining in, we're, we're doing a maintenance day. We're getting back after a four-day weekend, and we're doing a water change and maintenance on a 230-gallon plus edition water we, box. Uh, I can go ahead and detail around like the sand bed and the water okay. line with the scraper. Gotcha. Uh, for the areas that you can't. Okay, get I'll get the. Uh, you do want to avoid the sand bed. Give a shout out to Michael Schrader's with us, Roe, Nancy McRae, Troy, uh, James joining us. We also have a bunch of uh, friends on YouTube. We've got Andrew, Marine Tank Journey, says it's his first time stopping in. He's a fellow YouTuber and reef keeper from South Africa. So we've got oh, South come Africa. Come on now. now. Yeah, nice. Nice. Um, oh, look at this. Even Jess has the nice towels with the fishes on them. You see this? I got those for Christmas, and I was like, I'm going to bring those in. Wow. Okay. Look, with a little jellyfish. Yeah. How cute. Them. Love it. Love it, Jess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, good thing. A little women's touch here. Is so, guys, really got nice. any questions about water box? You got any questions about aqua illumination lighting that we use on these tanks? If you have questions about the corals, the yeah. fish. Yo, doesn't matter. Us. Post them below. We're doing a Q&A during this whole uh, live stream. I'm curious what people got for Christmas that's fish-related. Oh, that's a good question. Hey, good guys, question. post below. What did you get for Christmas for your aquarium? Yeah, We would like, love to know. Hey, did you get some Micron socks? You get a new skimmer? <laughs> you know? Always change your socks, man. Clean socks. Clean socks. Got to make sure, you got, make sure you got clean socks. Yeah, so I need a scraper to get in the corners. Michael said he got a skimmer full of poo for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we did too, actually, Mike. Uh, we got a big, full skimmer cup full of yeah, nastiness. Keenan will show you that, you know, you bowl. Like, yeah, I know. Have it like it shoots the smell out of their cell phone or something like that. That'd be great. Um, Larry says hello from Winnipeg, Canada. Brandon asked, what type of salt are you using? I believe we're using Fritz salt, Fritz. is that correct? Yes, correct. We are um, using the Fritz. And we are dosing uh, just manually right now because the tank load doesn't really require it very often yet. Yeah. And uh, a, lot, we, a lot of it happens through water changes, but we're dosing a, just a calcium, like a two-part system with an additional magnesium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, also, Rich, the, uh, a lot of people are off of work this week. No excuses, guys. 
time to do some water changes. You know, do some maintenance at home. You know, you got a little extra time on your hands? Dude, perfect time to do it. Perfect time to do it. Especially you got company coming over for new, you know, oh, yeah, for New Year's. New Year's party, that tank better be Yeah, bad. man, better be look pretty spiffy. But man, this thing's already with just simple, I mean, just a simple hitting the algae on this thing is really, really great. So I know a bunch of you guys have to have some questions. Oh, so yeah, they're, they're coming in. I'm just waiting for you guys All right, to finish. Good. So we've got the empty trash can here, too, guys. And people ask, I like to have two trash cans. You'll see, I got one over there, I got one here. This is, I use this for my dirty water, right? It's on wheels. We have a siphon tube. So what I'll do is I have that one full of the clean salt water ready to go at the right level. So if I match the water level in my empty can to that one, it'll be the exact amount. I won't, I won't be short on my water when I go to, to make it up. So we're going we're gonna to take water out. This is like a weekly small water change, which is actually pretty good, Jess. Don't you think? Like weekly smaller water changes versus large, yeah, you, you know, once a month that. water it's changes. It's going to help a lot with um, how much you're soaking and just a lot of the um, small elements that you mm -hmm. don't dose for that come in with your water. Yep. So if you can do smaller ones more frequently, it is going to be more stable and actually make your maintenance Quite a bit easier um, overall with dosing and, and all of that. So, you know, doing like one trash can on a tank this size, doesn't take too long. So you got to set it up exactly. to where, you know, drain out, pump in, you know, do some cleaning. And it doesn't have to take long at all. Dean has the most important tool that yes. you need to you invest in. So, guys, <laughs> refractometer. Do not leave home without it, okay? I'm telling mm -hmm. you, this thing is it's, it's so essential. Um, and you got to make sure it's a good quality one as well, because I mean there are some cheap ones out there on the market. But um, this also has a uh, auto temperature control, you know, mm -hmm. on it, so it, uh, it it calculates the temperature and everything with it. But we're running this tank here at 1.02324, I believe, is uh, what we're running. Let me take a little thing. So, so what I'll do I'm going to try to run through some questions, Dean, while you're while you're testing that salinity. So Terry is asking, any tips for an unexpected quick start on our water box? Had a tank crack prior to the water box being cycled, um, so she's. I, I think mm -hmm. she's kind of wondering if, you know, bacteria addition Two, or something like that. You know, I would suggest what the Fritz Turbo mm -hmm. Start yeah, to get it going. Fritz Turbo Start, yeah, the one that's actually uh, the refrigerated is going to be the like instant yeah. cycle. Um, also, if you're bringing it over, you're rocking it. Um, you know, if you're bringing it over your rock from the existing tank, a lot mm -hmm. of good bacteria is coming in with that. Right. Um, but yeah, a really good quality bacteria, you're going to spend a lot more, but it's going to do that instant stability. Right. Maybe you've got stock that you've had in fish and corals you've had for a while. It's worth investing in a good bacteria to get that tank going. Um, and then make sure your live rock that you're moving over um, from your other tank, you know, make sure it has to stay wet, you know, and then move that over. And that's going to bring a lot of good bacteria over as well. And someone had also asked, you know, did we do anything to speed up the cycle on this tank? And that's exactly what we did. We used some of the Fritz bacteria to, yeah. to get the rocks nice and seated with bacteria and we still to get the tank seated. Yeah, because of course. Just recently yeah. that we added corals and you know our fish, we didn't we didn't rush into that because even you know with adding bacteria, if you can, you know, take your time with the steps. But sometimes if you've got to move one tank to another or you've got a tank emergency, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you're gonna have to do it really fast and just. Yeah, and you just got to kind of, you know, keep a close eye on everything as you're doing the transition. Um, but like anything, I, I always say in marine aquariums, nothing good happens fast. So yeah. we always try to take every step, you know, at a slower pace. You know, don't yeah. jump right into adding corals and stuff sure. like that. If, and if anybody's asking, this is the 230.6, right? This plus is our edition. Plus edition pro series from Waterbox. This thing is 72 inches long. Six feet of pure awesomeness. Starfire glass, the cabinetry. Uh, talked to a couple of people already. They said they just picked up their water box. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, man, the cabinet is insane. They just love the quality of the cabinet. Um, just all the little features about what makes a water box a water box. Yeah. You know, yeah really, it's, really it's really in the that. details. It's, it's in the, the details, details, man. It's, it's all um, in the details. Brandon's asking, are we running an Apex? We are not. Uh, just. This is a relatively simple setup we have here. It's, you know, our, the way that we're maintaining it is pretty simple. Um, not to say you couldn't hook one up, but 
-hmm. know, we're already running the uh, the plus edition, so the lights are controlled, you know, through the My AI app. And we do all of our water testing with test kits. Old school. Yeah, old school. Yeah. So another feature, which is really great, I like to point out, I shut the water, I shut the pumps off, shut the skimmer off. But guys, the Pro Series has check valves uh, on the return lines. So you'll you notice that, that the, the water level is not really dropping severely in the tank because those check valves are kicking in and it's holding the water level constant. So, um, and that prevents the sump from overflowing. Um, really, really great feature that a lot of people just don't. And that's, that's a safety mechanism safety we built mechanism, in yeah. because our tank does have dual returns and the amount of water that would, without that check valve that would go down to the sump would probably overflow the sump. So. Correct. Um, Absolutely. Josh says, are those AI prime lights, do they come with the tank? No, Josh, they are, they are AI lights, but they're the Hydra 26. And with our uh, Waterbox Plus editions, they are included with the system, with the tank. Yeah. It includes the lights. Uh, this particular one would include four lights and four mounting arms. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's like he's, it's floating. Very, very cool. That's our good water ready to go. Yeah. So Dustin says, beautiful tank. It's a new tank, Dustin, but it's coming along. We got a, we still got a lot of real estate to fill in. Um, yeah, a lot more to go. James is, he says he hates to keep asking, but he's wanting to know if the 2.75 inch, inch mesh socks are becoming available. <laughs> Uh, James, you're not the only one asking. It's it's something that we we have talked about. I couldn't tell you when or if it's going to happen it just faster. yet. So just for speed of time, Brandon's asking what brand of kits. Uh, Brandon, we use Salifert test kits on for most things, especially with the magnesium, cal calcium, and alkalinity. Yeah, Salifert those are the are really easy to use. They're yeah. very accurate. Um, there's not you know a million steps to each one. Um, and they're tried and true for quite a while now. So, yeah. all right, go ahead and plug in. Yep, go ahead. Anthony is asking if you should worry about the sump overflowing on the 100.3. No, Anthony, I don't think there should be an issue. No. Um, as long as you have the water height, you know, around mm -hmm. what, nine inches or so yeah, in the I skimmer mean, chamber. The, the baffle in, in our pump skimmer is gonna keep your chamber at like eight, nine inches. And yeah. that's where you want it to be, to be safe enough. If you fill your pump way too high, then any system. Yeah, so yeah, it'll happen. Overflow. Yeah. Um, but they almost all skimmers out there run in that around that eight inch uh, chamber uh, height. So you want to keep it there anyway. Don't let it go higher than that. Mm -hmm. And then you should be fine as far as any kind of back. But also don't point your nozzles down all the way to the bottom. Right. They're going to back siphon down to where you're Yeah, run them a little bit closer to the surface because the further down the return nozzles are into the water, the more water is going to drain from the tank to the sump. Um, Eddie asks, how did you handle feeding while away? How do you normally feed? Well, oh, Dean was nice in, enough yeah. to come in on Christmas <laughs> Eve I did. and make sure that everything was topped off and the coral and, and the fish were fed and everything yeah. like that. So it, it required Christmas meal. hands on deck. Yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't do anything else though. He just came in and fed no, and made really sure that the auto top off chambers were topped were off. Yeah. So, you know, a, a great little trick. Um, if you're going out of town, you're going to have your neighbor feed your tank for you. Um, pre-measure the food out into little baggies with the date on it. So if you're feeding frozen yeah, food, you know, like cubes, yeah. so hey, on Monday, right, Monday, have the cubes in that little baggie, put it in the freezer, and let your neighbor, that way they're not overfeeding, you've actually measured out the food for them. Great, great little trick to... You uh, not believe how many disaster stories yeah. we've had, as we've <laughs> heard the people left someone washing their tank, and they left, like, this food, Put this yeah. much in it, you know, each uh, day. Dump half of it. And half of it's in there. And came back, their tank is completely cloudy, and the people always say it looked like they were still hungry. I'm really yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's it can be really bad. So if you have someone who's not like an, a fish expert watching your tank, yeah. um, have it bagged out. There's automatic feeders for mm -hmm. pellets if you want to feed the of course. people. Um, you know, in a couple of days, the fish are fine if they're not feeding them. So, you know, they do not have to be fed every single day. Yeah. Hey, look at this. I don't know if you get this. Look at the clownfish is trying to host this lobophilia. He's right in here. love with that thing, look, man. Look at him rubbing up on it. Watch he's this. He's got two beautiful anemones, and he's just look at trying to get in with this. He's trying to host that coral. <laughs> is that not cool? 
I know, he's left his little friend. He left his little friend on the, on the, he's on the anemone in the back there. But look, he's like trying to host that coral. Isn't that crazy? Cool things with clownfish is because they can host the wow. anemones, they actually build up a tolerance to the sting from the anemones. Mm. And if they go to host something like a, a frog spawn or a hammer, which you mm -hmm. actually see them do, um, or even something like that with that um, coral there, they actually have to build up a tolerance to that kind of sting from the right. coral as well. So you'll see them hosting into hammers or other stuff, but they actually have to build up tolerance to that coral as well. For sure, man. This is dude, love the love the uh, the stillness of the tank, everybody. I mean, it's really uh, yeah, you're muted. It's it's great. See how the polyps, everything's just open, and it's just like in in. What's the word? Uh, like uh, slow motion, you know? Like it's like it's, it's like they're in space. It's almost like frozen. Like yeah, it's like, like, it's like frozen <laughs> floating in, in space. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a uh, a weightless environment. Yeah, yeah, weightlessness. Like uh, very very. Rose cool. says it's an amazing tank. What does it include? How much is it? New to Waterbox. Ro head over to waterboxaquariums.com. We have about we have over twenty different sizes of aquariums. This is our largest, mm -hmm. um, ranging anywhere from about a hundred dollars all the way up to about five thousand dollars so it just really depends yeah. on anything what you're you looking need, for yeah. yeah yeah it depends on you know what what your goals are dustin says he's sneaking onto our live stream from work don't tell anybody <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all good and dustin, juan says on. that makes two of us <laughs> yes that's dedication you guys total dedication man <laughs> water box family represent for those of you that are just joining in what you're watching us do is our regular maintenance here on the Waterbox 230 yeah. gallons. So if you have any questions on what we're doing, how we're doing it, uh, how the system works, I mean, anything, um, whether it's maintenance related, water box related, yeah. aqua illumination related, husbandry, um, post it below. Yeah. So, you know, out of this whole tank, guys, we're only going to do this one trash can. At least trash cans are, what, 45 gallons? It's like a 44 when it's totally full. When it's so up to the top, it's 44 gallons. Probably about so 40 gallons what we'll do out of yeah, it. Yeah, about 40 gallons out of this 230-gallon tank. So it's a good, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like that the amount. You know, it's not too much, not too little. Um, you can do small baby water changes. Yeah. You know, I would refrain from the large monster ones. Yeah, no, you don't usually want to do more than that 20% if you can um, avoid it. Mm -hmm. It's better, like I said, do the smaller ones more frequent. Yeah. You're going to get yeah. more of the um, stability in your tank. And sure. I think, you know, being just hands-on and consistent um, is good for it, too. But making it simple like this, have one trash can to drain into, one thing. Yeah, one I mean, fill. it can be like, yeah. you know, smaller trash cans, depending on the size of your tank. You can have, you know, just a couple buckets or just a smaller trash can that holds 15 gallons. Whatever mm -hmm. works for you, just something to drain in, pump in, yep. and then you just dump everything, exactly. clean up, you and your system, tank has right? you been... Get a system down of what... To make it as quick and easy as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't have to be very difficult to do a quick little water change, you know? Um, it's got to be easy for you to do it yeah. and be consistent with it. And James, says, will benefit. James says, how's your clown tank doing? It's doing great, actually. It's just the two of our live streams, we've been covering the 230, because so we kind of wrapped up that build. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure at some point we'll probably revisit it. Yeah. yeah we can revisit that. Michael says he loves the rock work. The left side, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dean did the left side. So. Come on now, uh, let's start this again. <laughs> no, one wants to take, no one wants to take sides with that. Um, do you want me to go and do like yeah, socks? Yeah, let's do some water? socks and do the... Uh, Since this is sock. draining still, um, we've got our filter socks. Just so we get this out of the way, I don't want to ruin the carpet for any spilled water. Here. Clean filter socks. Um, okay, to change those out. Mm -hmm. I like to try and, if you can, change your socks like twice a week. Um, just keeping clean socks in there. You're gonna clean your water better. They're not gonna get clogged up or anything. And then also, like all the dirt that the filter socks are catching, while it's still just sitting there in the filter socks, it's not out of your system. So you're really not pulling out all that gunk and waste when your filter socks are still sitting there. So um, I like to try and do it twice a week. Vu says, "What's up? In the, what's the next bill? Is it the frag lineup?" As a matter of fact, Vu, it is. Actually, it is. Uh, we do have a frag system here that's been just waiting to get in the you know spotlight yeah. so we're hoping yeah. that you know sometime here in the beginning of 2019 we're going to start that build process um 
or that video series. Yeah, that's going to be a really hot one then. People are going to love that. Nice yummy dirty socks. Always change your socks. Always change your socks. John says he'll be buying a pump and a hose after seeing this. Goodbye siphoning mm -hmm. out and dumping buckets in. Oh man, yeah. no. There's yeah. no way to live. Yeah. It's kind of nice to have a little designated pump like that, you know. You actually just cut some tubing to length. It's, it's, it's yeah, easy. Yeah, don't you mean just a basic cheap pump, some tubing, and you've automated your water changes to be much yeah. easier and faster to do, and you're not killing yourself. Like, it breaks your back lugging buckets across yeah, the house, and you're splashing water, your wife's probably gonna kill you. Um, you can also p take the pump, once it's all done, put it back into this and pump it into a toilet or pump it outside, you know, where you don't have to. Uh, yeah, there's many different ways different to ways accomplish. To, to get rid yeah. of the water, the wastewater. So, but we're getting here to the close to the to the top here. So what we'll do is we'll take the skimmer and we'll actually clean it in that old water so that you're yeah, not having nice, to clean it trick. in a sink. Um, it's great to just do it in your wastewater because you're going to be dumping that anyway. Um, and any kind of like filter sponges you have or anything, mm -hmm. just clean them out in that old water that you already pulled out of the tank. Right, so the socks are changed. Socks are good. Now we're just going to do the skimmer in done. there. I just cleaned up. Quick little water change. It's also a good time, like if we didn't just do a big feeding last week, you know, and we wanted to, it's a great time to feed your corals now because you've already got the system shut down. That's true. You know, you're doing a cleaning. Um, good time to do, you know, just combine a lot of tasks at once if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, if you notice like a coral, you know, needs to be repositioned or something. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, one. good time just to be able to see everything. Um, and also, you see, and I know we talked about this when we got this one in, um, how it's almost like transparent flesh mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. this one, uh, the Signorina. If you look at the white sharp, the kind of like shards, that's actually the skeletal flesh. So the flesh that actually blooms up is practically clear on these. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them in like pinks and different forms. But it's one of the few that you can actually completely see into it, even whenever it's uh, filled out like that. It's really neat looking. I like that one, how it's a yellow base. and. You can actually see all the skeleton under it. Very cool coral. Yeah, fish are happy. Corals are happy. And yeah, I think some of the corals think they're about to get fed. <laughs> Getting some feeder tentacles coming out on this guy. Yeah. It does smell like the ocean a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna lie. Is this it? It goes to there. Oh, that was sitting on the table. Hmm. Ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. But you were running a little low on battery on the camera, or we're gonna do a quick swap out. Quick swap out on the battery. No All worries. Right. We're still with you guys. Just drain some water. <laughs> just drain some water. I think when you're doing a bigger water change. So we are and still just... here, guys. We just lost our battery. I don't know if we can get Keenan to switch over. The, uh, yeah. 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 We're coming back. Coming, coming back. back. We're still well, here. Yeah. Just purely the time it takes to drain water on a bigger tank is. Yeah. But having a pump to help and. It helps. Yeah. We're getting closer to the edge. Uh, yeah. Where we want to leave this thing. Yeah. Pick up the other hike. Yeah. It should be coming back here in a second. All right. So we're doing what, 44 gallon roughly chain? Probably right around 40. 40. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, usually I like to do it like up to the line mm -hmm. here. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, match it to what, you know, if you have the same scenario where you have one of clean and one of empty, just right. match it to be around match the same height. There's nothing worse than going through a whole water change and then realizing you're like five, ten gallons short. Yeah, oh my goodness. And <laughs> that's the you're worst. having to now make ten gallons of water and through an yeah. RO system, that's not necessarily the fastest process either. Yeah. So Jeff says, Hello from Texas. Hope to buy a tank in the next couple months. Your four foot frag looks great and easy for maintenance, but he's thinking about the one seventy or the one ninety. Mm, to replace two tanks in his office. Very oh. nice. Very nice. So take a look at the so, plus edition, Jeff. That uh, includes oh. the Oxygen illumination lighting, so you can um, simplify getting your lighting set up for right. with the, the right with amount of lights. Bin. <laughs> Mark's asking if we're keeping the top open. Yeah, as far as I know, we don't really have any real jumpers in there. Uh, right, Jess? 
Yeah, um, you know, I know we've talked about doing like some fairy wrasses or stuff like that in here. Um, and if we do, we will want to get a um, lid for it or, you know, gobies and blennies and stuff. But we kept it pretty simple on the fish and stuff at the moment. Nothing mm. that's going to jump that we have to worry about too much. John's asking, do we pick the nice list tank winners yet? John, we're going to do that today for you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So five lucky people are going to win a cube tank from the uh, Waterbox Facebook group. Oh, yeah. There's some good shares in the post on there, really too. Good. I really yeah. enjoyed that one. Yeah. That so was now fun. we got this wastewater in here. Mmm. Mm, delicious. We're about to make Dustin it real says, nasty. Dustin says, do you wash your socks, machine or hand wash? We use a machine, Dustin. Yep. Um, just your regular old washing machine. Don't put your clothes in there with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might smell a little yeah. funny. Um, yeah, in the washing Coworkers machine. Coworkers might not appreciate uh, that very No much. detergent. Just do a couple rinses. You can use bleach if you want to just make them a little bit more white, like white clear in appearance. Um, do make sure that they air dry and everything, mm -hmm. so any chlorine does uh, evaporate off of them. But you can take them out with a hose, a little pressure washer. You know, there's quite a few ways you can do it. Um, washing machines just the simplest. Yeah, yeah. John says when you turn the lighting off, if the corals up top get uncovered by water, um, I don't think so. They, they don't put off a lot of heat. So no, I mean <laughs> if you had the halides or T5s and it was blasting them, mm -hmm. then it's gonna be for very yeah. long. You know, I would say Jay, turn them off just because of heat. Yeah. These aren't putting any heat off. Um, and most of these corals, if they're out of water for a period of time, you know, it's not a big deal to them anyway. But yeah, if you had halides or T5s, I'd say probably turn them off if yeah. you're gonna be t exposing the corals themselves. Yeah. Jay says, what kind of nims are those? They're just rose bubble tip anemones. Mm -hmm. They don't have their bubble tips for say, whatever reason. But, uh, no, it's like this variety. Um, this has really long tentacles and they get yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah, before this one split, I mean, it was like 12 yeah, inches enormous. across, massive. It's like a basketball. And um, it never bubbles on the tentacles. Mark says, what lights? Mark, these are the Aqualumination Hydra 26s. And Waterbox has a series called the Plus Edition. Mm -hmm. And what that includes is our, our base model aquariums. With, and they include the Hydra 26s with the mounting arms. Yeah. And Keenan's going to give you a nice shot of those. So they, we've done all the homework for you on these Plus Editions. You don't need to try to figure out how much light you need to cover your Waterbox. We've done it all for you. Tremendous value built into these systems. Wi-Fi controlled. Uh, yeah. Through the My AI app, it's tr really just nice. a really, really great setup, and you're going to be able to mm -hmm. do any type of marine aquarium with them, whether it's a fish tank or it's a full-blown SPS tank. And yeah. when you look at the the water box, when they have those plus edition lighting on them, it's just so clean and sleek looking. Like it's just, per it looks perfect. Yeah, you know, it's meant to be. It is meant to be. Yeah, this is the perfect uh, perfect pairing and group. So, and the the. Single mounting arms have the perfect height. They're about 12 inches off the uh, tank, mm -hmm. which is gives you plenty of room to do any maintenance. First thing is you have this beautiful water box, and you have like a big bulky lighting system or something that takes away from that like just beautiful yeah. look of the system itself. Yeah. All right. So we've got a nasty old skimmer. Dude, nasty. Very excited Biohazard. about this. I see Dean just kind of walked in the I'm, other direction. I'm, I'm He's like, I'm out. I'm, I'm not out. touching this one. I'm out. <laughs> I don't have my gloves. <laughs> like I said, so using our old water. This isn't the bad part. This. This is the. This is the. This part ain't even bad. <laughs> as full That's as that skimmer is, is <laughs> I'm. Yeah, I feel like we should just like dump it in here and just run this somewhere because it's gonna be gross, but. Yeah. Or if you want, you can just run over and right dump, straight it, to dump the it down the uh, toilet. Dump it down the toilet. Yeah, flush. <laughs> Gone. That might be the best. That might be the best. <laughs> just so we don't contaminate. We don't want the water box headquarters <laughs> main lobby smelling like skim eight. There's our funky. Oh, oh, you want to? No, right I'm going. I'm right going. Right in the toilet. <laughs> right in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, right in the toilet. 
So you guys see that big old nasty oh God, on the floor. skimmer cup full of oh junk. God. Um, oh God. <laughs> That oh was not a good idea. Right, not a good idea. Oh, All right. God. <laughs> it, it ended up on the floor. On the floor. All right. <laughs> so. Live uh, TV. Yeah. All right. So it, it, we For can't we... get the camera over there, but we did have a little bit of a, a spill <laughs> on the floor. I got a towel down. I can tell you that if you fan. did that in your house, your wife or your significant other would not be very happy about it. Mm. Um, but right. that's okay. We got a mop. We own a mop, not right? A mop. Well, the shape of a um, skimmer cup when you tilt it is not necessarily... Mm. When it's that full, all going in <laughs> it one direction. Out the back. Yeah. It, it did, and it went. Did it's you, you on, didn't take a shower in it, did you? Made its way over into yeah. the floor of the bathroom, so that one is <laughs> off use for the day. Wow. See, oh. this is great. Like this. Dude, this is this is mad shout out. Oh. Nasty. Mad shout out to service technicians, aquarium <laughs> service techs. Dude, they're worth every dollar you pay them. Seriously. They do the, the down and dirty for you. They do it for you. I'm telling you. Call your local store. Those of you joining in, uh, we're doing, it's maintenance day on the 230 gallon dream build. If you have any questions, post them below. Could be anything. Could be questions about lighting, questions about the water box system. What kind of glass do we use? What, how much aminos did Dean drink today? <laughs> <laughs> um, how fresh does our office smell? Yeah, yeah smell of vision What does it mean when we say whoop, whoop? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> All right, nice clean skimmer. Nice clean skimmer. This pump is actually a little small for the speed of filling this thing up. But Evan says he can't believe we spilled it. So Evan, what happens if the skimmer is too full? Is it it comes back yeah. through the other direction of the collection cup? So it's uh, yeah. It makes it a little tricky when the skimmer is really full. Crazy. It sounded like a good idea to go put it in the toilet, but it did not work out. It didn't work out. in our favor. <laughs> it's all right. Clean up aisle three. <laughs> 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 oh, my. Wow. For those of you that haven't had the pleasure of smelling oh my God. Skim 8. Yeah. It's delicious. It's a... Uh, I don't even know what to compare it to. I don't think there's really well, anything you can yeah, compare so it to. Not, so we're just filling this bad boy up. we got to get the water level up to where it was before we can go ahead and fire the pumps back on so that the, uh, the sump doesn't run dry. Because if I turn that pump on now, it'll drain the sump all the way out. It'll push it into here, but now my sump will be uh, empty. Dean, tell us about this, the dimensions of this 230-gallon tank. Wow. Well, for, before, 72 inches long, guys. But this glass is, is what people notice, the first thing. I mean, the Starfire <laughs> glass, it's three quarter inch thick. I mean, and it's, it's, it's a beveled edge on it. And yeah. I mean, it's so beautiful and it's such a large span of this, this Starfire clear glass, it just really makes Waterbox. Yeah, unique. one thing that makes yeah. Waterbox unique is that we do use Starfire glass. It's a brand yeah. of glass, so it's a, Get a the, USA uh, company uh, brand. We use licensed uh, on all of our tanks. Yeah, so and it's, it's an ultra clear. It's literally just about as clear as acrylic. And this guy's right here, you see that? It's almost the same clarity. This is glass. This is not plastic. This whole overflow box here that you see is all solid glass and these teeth have been cut out of the glass. So really, really nice. And this. On, on all sides, as the dual returns on this thing, really that helps make it a water box as well. I mean, not everybody's got that. No. Tell you Nobody that got that. Sure. <laughs> um, Nobody's got that. Yeah, and it, it makes it so like usually your overflow box is that part, that part of the tank that you just can't get it clean and looking like the right. rest of it because right. it's, it's usually acrylic or plastic or something. So you can't scrape it of algae the same, mm -hmm. you know, it gets a lot of buildup on it. So with Waterbox having the full glass, you can keep it crystal clean, just like the whole back and sides of the tank as well. Um, Michael makes, says, uh, how high do we have the lights above the water line? Mike, so this is the single arm mounting kit for the AI lights, and we have it at the maximum height, because that's like, yeah. aesthetically and functionally, that's the best height on these tanks. Um, so it's really easy to set up. You just go to the maximum height on it. I'm gonna give some love to YouTube here, because we've got a lot of questions over here. Um, Let's see. 
people are asking. I got to take minutes. Robert says he's getting ready to install a Clarity roll filter. So that's cool. Yeah, we're working on getting those uh, specced out for our tank. So anybody that's looking to add them can easily just look at our chart and yeah. figure out which one works best. So I mean, from from the tank, we're we're about 14 inches height. Actually, maybe a little bit lo lower. About 12 inches from the actual bottom of the light to where the water level is. Yeah. Really, really um, great. Do got a new thing. family member, Brandon, just picked up a Q15 Plus a couple weeks ago. Chris 24. Moore gives us the thumbs up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Love this tank, man. I've seen some crazy stuff people do with the uh, tricking these cabinets out and uh, mounting like different, uh, all their Ecotech controllers. And yeah, we had one LED recently um, on a Pro and the, mm -hmm. the side that had the all the equipment actually was a uh, slide, swing open door so you can yeah. just open, get they behind it, and it was, it was like great. right up to the front. Um, do some really, really nice stuff with their equipment side of it. And Chris, you've got plenty of room in there, so you actually can do mm -hmm. all Big of welcome that. Welcome to the Waterbox family. The Chris Moore just got his 100.3 delivered last week. Yeah! So he can't wait to get water in it. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Matthew's asking what state Waterbox is in. We are in sunny Orlando, Florida. It's actually going to be mm -hmm. nice today, too. Yeah, we're really north nice. of Orlando, Florida, actually. But really, uh, uh, no one knows where Longwood, Florida is, so it's easier <laughs> to say, say Orlando. Orlando. <laughs> north Orlando. Uh, Phil just received his 230 gallon two weeks ago, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, All right. Yes. So, where's a good spot to put his bag of charcoal? Um, anywhere in the If you don't have a reactor, I usually just. Pop it in this filter stop. Yeah, throw it in the filter the stop. That's a, there's yeah. a lot of flow going through there, so that's a force a lot spot. of flow through mm -hmm. it. And sometimes your media bags, if they rip open or something, it's mm -hmm. gonna get caught versus having a whole bunch of media chucked into your yeah. tank itself. So, and it is gonna force more water than it's anywhere. But um, reactors are also a good, good option for that. Mm -hmm. I said this pump's a little slow. <laughs> Pump's a little slow, but that's all right. We're we're almost there, guys. Good time for just questions and yeah. How many gallons of top off water do we use weekly, roughly, Jess, on this tank? Um, I would say I mean because the LEDs don't put off much heat, so there's not a lot of evaporation from that. Um, I mean I would say probably in a given week, probably like. 15 gallons? Yeah. yeah. You fill the, the, the top off reservoir in this 230 is about 19 gallons. And we don't even fill it all the way up, but about once a week. Yeah, about once a week, I pretty much from our water vats drag the hose over, um, fill it, you know, most of the way up. And mm. then I don't have to usually worry about it till the following week. Um, we had a lot of like fans in here or, um, you know, not the LEDs and just a hotter lighting, then you might evaporate more, but. You actually find like the time of the year will determine how much eva evaporation you have in your tank too. Um, Cause like when your AC unit is running, it actually dehumidifies the air. So that actually causes more evaporation in your tank. So a lot of times like winter time, you won't evaporate as much water as during the summer. What's nice for this tank to just have to fill it up one time and not even worry about it with having such a yeah. big reservoir. I'll just turn Vu Vortex wants to see the on. frag tank to the right of Dream Build. Not yet, Vu. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> She's not ready for uh, prime time yet. We need to make sure that this it's looking pristine. Oh. Yeah, so I turned the Vortex pump on. Get the flow moving Get in there. Get the flow moving a little bit. And once you kick this back on, like it looks pretty cloudy because you've cleaned the glass, you stirred some stuff up, you've got water in. Um, you know, clean filter socks, this is going to be running. We can come back here, you know, half an hour to an hour and it's going to be, you know, clear yeah. and um, everything again with all that water that gets. Krista says, through. how many gallons is a sump? On this one, 40 gallons. 40 gallons, and that would be if it was filled all the way to the top, right? Yeah. Roughly. So um, it's a 40 gallon sump on this tank. Chris Kent said, just wanted to thank you all for taking your time to help educate us on all aspects of the aquarium hobby. You're welcome, Chris. We, uh, we really, it's re we're really glad that it helps everyone out and that's what we're here doing it for. Yeah, it's really cool. And that little thing, if, if for anybody didn't check out, I got this cool little remote. Oh, <laughs> snap. So I think there's some people noticing that I said I would join in on the next water change, Dean. 
Oh. Uh, uh, Brandon says, I got an additional cleaning crew with my water box purchase. <laughs> and then uh, Jared says, dreaming of having this tank and three people for maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> I did get the easy job again. But what people don't see is I have done water changes behind the scenes, so. But yeah, so yes. I, I got some simple LEDs uh, on a little remote, just stuck them underneath so that no, add a little atmosphere. I'm pretty sure one of the first things you said whenever <laughs> we were going to put this tank up was that you needed to find your LEDs through your cabinet. I know. Ooh, I think it? it was like, oh, yeah. Number yeah. One. Look at that. Disco. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Sick. <laughs> We need some uh, speakers under there. Talk something. about, yeah, for New Year's Eve, everyone needs to go get some LEDs under their cabinet and for their party, it'll be a yeah. perfect mood lighting. It does. Helen help. is in with us from the UK. What percent do you do of water change? Thanks. Uh, what percent was that? Well, I mean, this one's probably about 40, what, 40 gallons is what we're doing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it puts it around a 20% water change, yep, roughly. Yep. Um, you know, and we we aim, you know, every week to every two weeks, kind of depending. Um, and but last week we did feed really, really heavy for the yeah. um, the water box lab that we did. So we want to make sure we did a big enough one this week, get it all cleaned up. It had four days of getting no love over the holiday. Um, but you know, you could easily, if you want to, do like a ten percent a week, like grab twenty gallons, yeah. strain out, put it back in, very you know, easy. for your weekly water change. Yeah, very easy to do that. We want to make sure all of our corals and fish stay super happy in this one. Yeah. We're also using the Vectra pump on this, guys, return pump. A lot of people ask, you know, what return pump are we using? Um, we, we are using the Vectra uh, M1 on this tank. Yep. Um, DC pump, fully controllable, uh, whisper quiet, can't even hear it running. Yeah. I mean, that thing is no, strong. That's great. I mean, you can really, you can ramp it up, slow it down. Really, really Compared great Compared to pump. other pumps on the market, that, that pumps, yeah. you know, relatively in the higher price range but mm -hmm. i always say invest in one of the yeah. nicest pumps with a company that stands behind it because it's literally like the artery of your system and if you're gone and that fails it's it could oh, be yeah. disastrous so you want to invest in a, in a real quality pump totally. not to mention the water box system is designed to be quiet mm -hmm. and if you <laughs> put a loud junky pump under your tank yeah. it yep. defeats yep. the purpose and exactly. the, the vectra is almost inaudible yeah, and a lot of pumps you'll find, um, you go with the cheaper pump, is A, they're not going to last you that long. You're going to spend money just to replace it shortly. Mm -hmm. But also, a lot of them put off a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're going to find that your tank is running so hot, and it's actually your return pump putting up all that heat, because it is an yeah. internal one. So, um, you know, when people start talking about how they have to have a chiller for their tank mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. it can come down to your equipment just not being a good quality equipment that's putting off tons of heat into your water. Yeah. The other thing is that, you know, some... Sometimes you might do a water change and your coral starts sliming up. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that is very, very normal uh, as well. We're actually, these corals are actually still wide open. Yeah. Um, with this new <laughs> they clean don't care. water. They, yeah. These guys don't seem They're to care. Right now. Um, but sometimes if you have SPS corals, yeah. uh, you do a water change, you'll see like a slime just start coming off of the corals, mm -hmm. um, which is perfectly normal. So don't. Don't get alarmed. If, uh, Dean, who's that. asking where you got those cabinets under, or the, the light for under the cabinet? Uh, oh, Amazon. I just went on Amazon. Just I actually looked for under like a kitchen <coughs> cabinet light, under cabinet lighting for kitchens. Uh, remote control. Remote control, yeah. Just yeah, remote there's a ton LED of them. kitchen lighting. We'll know, see if we can uh, kitchen cabinet lighting. grab that URL and send it here in yeah. the uh, comments later. It wasn't very expensive. It was like $30, $40 or something like that. That's also um, nice just because you can have, you know, just, you know, just the white, you're under there and you can see every area. Up. Like yeah. you get under your cabinet sometimes, you're like, it's dark and you can't mm -hmm. see it too well. Um, unless you keep everything even that much cleaner and make sure everything's running good. So it's yeah. nice to have that extra light in the cabinet. Even yeah. if you're not going for the dance Sawyer party. Sawyer do you heat the water prior to putting it in the tank? Yes. Yes, we did have a heater running in this. Um, it, you do want to make sure it matches pretty close. You do not want to go dumping in this ice tank 40 gallons of water that's ice cold yeah, or, um, too hot. or too hot. Like, you know, some people are making their water out in their garage. It's yeah. winter time. It's going to be cold. You mm -hmm. know, either bring it in for a day, put the heater in, you know, make sure it matches very close. Same with salinity. Yeah. Um, in general, all of your um, alkalinity and calcium temperature salinity, you want that all to match your tank when you're doing a water change. Yeah. You can stress stuff out. Temperature swings will be like the number one stressor of fish whenever you do that. For sure. So we're getting close to the teeth there of this uh, water hitting the teeth. Um, I said, so we're real close to firing this puppy back up. 
you guys want to join a wonderful group of fellow hobbyists and Waterbox owners, Waterbox family, uh, head on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Waterbox group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got about 1,200 people in there actively, you know, talking about their tanks, yeah, talking they're about awesome what group. they're going to, you know, awesome. their new tanks and uh, just everything in general. There's a lot of really cool water boxes in there. That's right. Yeah, that's where you see some of the coolest mods and like cabinet yeah. uh, equipment that they're doing. Some rock work is It's unbelievable too. the level that people customize their water box. You know, we've, yeah. we've gotten you 80% of the way. Mm -hmm. um, but they go in and they, they start building in custom uh, facades to you know hold their controllers and their wiring and um, just over the top. It's gorgeous, yeah. But I think that's some of our we got some peninsulas in there that just have the perfect rock work yeah. I've ever seen and just yeah. um, really really nice builds in there. And it's just a great, happy, good community. Everyone's willing to help and. All the people asking pictures of people's stumps and stuff, and everyone's sharing, and you know, they're just a good group to get information and, and mm -hmm. inspiration and ideas. Yeah. All right, here we go. How close are we? Is it going in yet? Should be getting real close. If you guys have any questions, post them below. Doing a water change, some regular maintenance on the 230 gallon. Um, you know, when you have a tank this big, Maintenance is something you really have to consider, and, yeah. not, and some of it's not so obvious as to how to accomplish it. So that's why we're here trying to show you how we do it. Um, mm -hmm. So again, if you have any questions, post them below. For sure. So we're real close there, hitting that teeth. It's just about to go over. Also, like when you're doing a water change, um, like we talk about. Unplug your ATO system if you have one running, mm. because as your sump's trying to level out when yeah. you're putting the tank water, if you're short a little bit, or if you need to add yeah. a little, um, you don't want that ATO kicking in and dumping a lot of fresh water in. Yeah, good point. Just yeah. one of those small things that sometimes you don't think about. Um, yeah, so it's good to really, you're really powering everything down. Except for your lights, so you can see. Lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because you don't want anything messing up your uh, water levels and such. Yeah. So we're getting down to the bottom here. Shane says, are those 55-gallon brute cans? 44. 44-gallon, Shane. James asks if we have discounts for service members. James, I will check on that for you, and if we do, I'll post it below. So we're getting down to the bottom here. I said we also bought the wheels that go with them. Oh, uh, yeah. It's almost a necessity because... There's no... Yeah, you have to. This thing's full of water. You ain't sliding it. No. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You gotta have those yeah, wheels. Good luck on moving it. it. Yeah, like good luck. It doesn't have wheels on it. <laughs> so, uh, so we're real close here. Probably good to go ahead and kick it on and. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Unplug. Yeah, you can unplug that pump. That'd be good. Mm. Right. If you have a last gallon or two left in there, you know, you can always just dump that in if you need it. Dustin's asking if we pre the, preheat the RO water we put back in. Um, I don't think we pre... I think we have, might have heaters in the water back there, in. but yeah. uh, especially in when we're doing a big water change. Yeah, well, we heat the... RO the... water, we don't, we don't preheat that, I don't believe, do we? Generally? No, not the RO water, um, just the salt water whenever we're going to be mixing it for a water change. The... Um, RO water, even if, I mean, I guess if you kept it outside or in a garage, you might want to if you live somewhere that's like 30 degrees. Um, but generally, you're going to be putting that into your ATO reservoir. So it's going to mm -hmm. equalize the temperature. But if it is going to go direct into your tank or is like way out of range, yeah. you may want to actually consider. And that's the other thing is, you know, we're in Florida. So our cold, even though we whine about it, it's not that yeah, cold. So Typically, we don't really have many issues, especially if your water is stored indoors with heating or cooling. Um, but if you're in a very cold environment and you store your water in your garage, you're probably going to need to heat it up. The Minos. Minos, come on now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it looks like, I don't even know if we might. Do we need 
Um, I mean, maybe just, well, I guess once we turn the skimmer on and stuff, yeah, yeah I'd go ahead and put that in. Um, it's a little bit under our ATO sensor, but we'll kick the skimmer on in a second. And Dustin says go. he's yeah. in Canada and it's freezing there always. Dustin, that's why I live in Florida. Oh, yep. Yeah. I, I've lived in Florida most of my life and I can't, I can't do the cold. It's been a little cold here lately and I, I don't like it. <laughs> skimmer fired up. Shane, that's actually a... a if, Boom. He's asking what type of scraper you were using. Um, the white one, I think it was a continuum. Yeah, yeah continuum. continuum. Mm -hmm. And then the magnetic cleaner is a Cove brand. I think I had like a regular Kent one that I use yeah. for touch up or something. So and there's a lot of different brands of mm -hmm. magnet cleaners and glass scrapers. They all pretty yeah, much yeah. They have uh, do the replacement same blades on them too, so you can actually take this blade off. You can pop this off and then put a replacement blades they sell, or they also have acrylic ones too. They have acrylic. Want. They have one like has a little brush pad on it. Yeah. Um, different attachments that kind of click onto the handle. Yeah. Real nice. Because like then once you do your initial investment, you're just buying replacement blades, um, and it's real cost effective to do it that way. Whereas you'll see like some of your other ones, they might be cheaper to buy at first, but yeah. that's the only blade that they have, and you can't you know buy the replacements or different varieties. Negative and 14 stuff. degrees where Dustin is. That's you know what? I, I'm Come good, on now. Dustin. You can have that. I, I don't want. <laughs> it. I, don't, I don't know, man. It gets down to like 70, and I'm like, ah, it's too cold. Yeah. It's been, it's been down to like. 40 at night. And, yeah, no, I'm, uh, running, I'm running the heat, man. Once it hits 72 in my house, I'm um, Mike's asking how much is the 230. Shane replied 4,500. That is correct. And that 4,500 is, is for the plus edition. If you want to, you know, go out and buy your own lighting system, you're, you're, the tank will run you, I think, around uh, 32.99. Yeah. So the other thing we should tell everybody about uh, 2019, Rich, is that all the trade shows that we're going to be going to. Yeah, and trade representing. So if you guys are across the country here in the United States, um, you can come see us. We better yeah. see a lot of our Waterbox family out. A lot. Yeah, we so have shev seven, yeah, seven, seven shows. Seven shows. So scheduled. we're going to be at uh, pretty much every Reef of Palooza. So we got Reef of Palooza Orlando, New York, Chicago, uh, Orange County, California. We're going to be at Aquashella, Chicago, Aquashella, Dallas. And then we're also going to be at Macna in Orlando. So, um, if you guys are hitting any of the shows, definitely we want to come see. We want to meet you guys. Uh, we'll be broadcasting live. You get to see the tanks in person. Really great. So now we just really wipe everything down, Jess. Right? I mean, yeah. Um, we'll wipe it all down. Make sure everything looks. You know, we're gonna make a mess on your glass. So get it dried up, and then you can kind of touch up and, and clean yeah. up the glass of your watermarks and stuff. Um, you know, give your stand a wipe down along your doors and inside panels. Um, you also, you know, are going to get some salt buildup and stuff on your sump, so it's a good time to kind of just wipe the sump down, and it just makes everything stay and really nice and clean looking. Yeah. Because our yeah. sumps are really pretty and they're very nicely done, so keep them clean and. Looks fantastic. Man, I'm telling you, everybody. Easy as that. Easy as that. The more waiting of. Uh, Water to soft drain closed, and fill than anything. Soft closed doors, Rich. You know, we used to talk about that all the time. Yeah. And and people yeah. don't realize that you know you can't slam the door on a water box. You know, it's, yeah. it's just a nice soft yeah, close. It's all very. Real. I would say it's actually higher than furniture grade because yeah. the the density of the materials that we use it's all hardwood. Yeah. Um, we have three hinges on there. They're all coated with PVC to prevent corrosion. Looks really um, really good. UV painted doors. Yeah, really, those will really be better than quality, any yeah. piece of furniture in your house. Yeah. And this same uh, kitchens that cost a thousand times yeah. more are more expensive than that cabinet. The <laughs> same, the same cabinet. It, we use it on the uh, the reef, the frag, the pro, and the peninsula. So any of those tanks, guys, that you uh, that you're interested in, have this this cabinetry like this. Yep. The UV coated is wonderful. Really, really nice. Fish and uh, coral, I mean, be I think, breathing in happy yeah, today. Yeah, I think everybody's happy, Jess. Everybody's super. 
I, I can't believe how the corals are all open. I mean, the polyps are even open on the leather. Mm. For, for those of you watching. with us, if you're looking to buy a water box, you can go to waterboxaquariums.com, you can go to saltwateraquarium.com, marinedepot.com, and as well as we have a number of local independent retailers across the country. Um, so if you hop on our website, you can view a list of them there that are close to you. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're a retailer that you frequent doesn't carry water box, hey, come on, it's tell time. them it's time to get on board. <laughs> they're missing out. <laughs> because, come on now. Uh, they're fantastic tanks. All right, yeah. I think so this beauty is good. It. I think we did it. So yeah. now all we'll have to do is um, we're just going to dump the old water. Do a little here. clean up of socks and stuff. Yeah, and we're uh, we're good. Wow, I'm telling you. Here we are back in the studio. Come on now. Magic. One hour, <laughs> one hour water change on the 230 gallon dream build. Um, that was good stuff, you guys. Stuff. There was a lot of information in that. A lot. Um, and that's why I think it's so valuable to do those kinds of things, because again, it's not. A lot of that stuff isn't necessarily common sense as to how to do a water change on a system yep. that big. Yeah, totally agree. Just totally visually agree being able to see the steps and ask yeah. your questions as it's happening yeah. and stuff. It's really informative. It's good to do. Um, and you can't really find that information. You gotta work out. I'm telling you, man, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm gonna take this thing off. <laughs> you did, you did work today. <laughs> did some work. Come on now. So whoop, again, whoop. you got. <laughs> 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 Doing work, Ken. <laughs> I'm sweating, buddy. So, guys, <laughs> uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep on going, man. We got a lot planned. I mean, so, jam packed. Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to it. Looking forward to 2019. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Mm -hmm. Happy and, New Year coming. Yeah, and happy New Year coming. Appreciate it. Bye.